Okay, hello everyone. The team Central America, that is Miriam, Romero, Andre Ott and myself, Lara Push, send you a warm welcome and we hope you will enjoy our presentation. Sorry again for not being able to present on the final session. I will now talk about options and pathways for stakeholder engagement in the palm oil sector in the district of Chiris Puriscal in Costa Rica. Let's start with our case. We are talking about the southern central region in Costa Rica, right where the coastal tropical region changes into a more hilly mountain kind of area. The climate is humid and hot, so it's ideal for oil palm cultivation. In the region, we can say that oil palms are, rel are a relatively new crop since they have been established in the year 2000, which is quite recently, especially in comparison to other regions in Costa Rica which started planting oil palms in the 1940s and onwards. In the beginning, it was a small project, taking off with a few smallholders planting about 60 he hectares which is very little in comparison to the more than 50,000 hectares planted in Costa Rica. Um, however, high international prices and also the expansion strategies of bigger companies that buy and process the palm fruits have raised interest in the crop, resu resulting in a very ra rapid expansion of the palm oil crop in Chiris. From 2007 till today, the 60 hectares have increased to almost 900. Since much of the land was actually used for cattle farming before, its conversion to palm plantations can be seen from a positive angle. However, uh, we need to consider some issues. Many current smallholders are new to the crop. They do not possess any knowledge how to properly manage their cultivation with best practice. And many of them lack a proper soil analysis and they also located their plantations in areas with high inclination. This usually requires terrace building and a special attention to drainage and erosion prevention. But not all of them, or better to say many of them, lack these. In combination with the very basic knowledge about the crop among many smallholders, also the international palm oil price dropped after most investments were made. So today many farmers face low productivity in combination with low economic returns. But in need for this economic return, uh, several deforestation activities have been observed in the area and the need to create a project to help out has become very evident. On the next slide you see a map of Costa Rica to get a little, a little further idea where we are located. But more important, to get to know our stakeholders, you see an interest influence matrix with our main stakeholders. We, the, we see the smallholders on the left, printed in red. As landowners, they have a high power to implement change. However, they seem not to be very interested because they fear that investments have to be made when they hear someone talking about conservation and environmental projects. Some of them are organized in small cooperatives, others cooperate independently, others operate independently. Sorry. On the right, we see two governmental institutions, MAC, the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock, and SINAC, the National System for Protected Areas, which is also monitoring forest areas in general. They represent entities which have regulated function and also an interest in sustainable land management and conservation projects. Palmatica and Cope Agropal represent the two big companies buying the production from the smallholders and therefore they are quite important. Also they represent the main drivers for the former expansion. Even though their interest in sustainable practices is high due to the RSPO certification, they pursue also a strong economic interest and might be hard partners in the end to negotiate with. Another body it I identified is Canapalma, the National Association of Palm Oil Producers. In the following we assign the role of the intermediary organization and moderator to them to increase its influence 
or to increase their influence as Tanapalma's interest is to create a strong but sustainable industry. Um, finally, we identified six local communities which are not involved at this point in time, but they benefit from the remaining patches of forest and its ecosystem services. So here we think uh, is a need to increase their involvement in the process. Mm, we have fa five main objectives. First is better land use practices in smallholder all palm cult cultivations or plantations. Um, also, we want to achieve a reduced dependency of them from the oil palm crop via alternative livelihood scenarios and conservation of forest areas within the existing oil palm plantations to keep uh, more than anything the bigger players interested we want to advance on the roadmap to smallholder certification in RSPO in 2020 and as palm oils uh, or oil palms <laughs> sorry are a crop that lasts not only two three or five years but 20 to 30 and even more um, it would be very useful to create a professional network for future projects and work continuously on the issues how can we achieve all this basically we want to pile our project on two pillars which is special attention to growers and community involvement growers need training and knowledge about how to increase productivity without cutting forest but rather improving conditions of their plantations the content of communication needs to be closely related to their problems to make sure that they maintain their interest and also to make sure that a certain environment of trust can be established to um, generate also the trust that with professional knowledge the goals of the smallholders can be combined with protection of the land they operate on communities first need to be interested in the project but um, we consider them as a very valuable source of knowledge and participation as they might be able to help to develop very uh, realistic alternative livelihood scenarios in cooperation with the growers uh, above you see all the activities we planned to do or to carry out in order to achieve um, the goals of these two pillars uh, conclusively one could say we want to improve on the one hand agricultural practices and thus increase productivity but uh, not only leave it to that but also on the other hand establish alternative options to achieve our second objective the reduced dependency from the crop finally i would like to stress another approach we found quite useful to set rules for for communication and me measurement also um, planning our project um, we try to apply the smart the traditional smart approach um, but also we want our measures to be spiced as this approach is designed for participatory projects it is supposed to be more adaptive and more flexible and according to the authors it should provide qualitative information which is locally meaningful readily useful and context specific so um, just what we need thank you for your attention